Members, uh, the question is the motion be agreed to. We go to another valedictory speech. The Honourable Brian Ellis. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Alyssa, a hard act to follow. <laughs> thank you. Um, Mr. President, not many people get the chance to serve as a member of the uh, Western Australian State Parliament. And so I'm very fortunate indeed to have been here in this place for nearly 10 years. Uh, having entered Parliament in opposition and then been part of a government for eight and a half years, um, now back in opposition, I suppose this is the time when one reflects, reflects back on what has been achieved in that time uh, or in some cases what hasn't been achieved. Being in opposition is a great uh, training ground for, uh, for members. But I will say to my party colleagues, who haven't been in opposition before, you don't want to stay here too long. <laughs> the people have spoken at the last election and we lost for many different reasons. But I would like to uh, congratulate the Labor Party and uh, as the new government, I do wish them well. One consolation of the last election was the winning of the seat of uh, Geraldton, where my office is and I had spent a lot of time working with Ian Blaney to get him across the line, and uh, uh, I, he was here, but <laughs> I would like to congratulate Ian for winning that seat. Uh, Mr. President, just reflecting back on some of the achievements in the agriculture region, region um, just some of those that come to mind, like um, Muresk being open for business, um, the Mushay sale yards and the uh, other regional stock yards uh, that have been upgraded to the state of the art uh, standards. The realignment of the Bindi Bindi Bends, uh, the Great Northern Highway, something that uh, I've been pushing for for over 20 years. It was great to see that achieved. The um, Indian Ocean Drive completed in our first term of government under budget and ahead of time compared to the previous government's 10 kilometres. Uh, right, I think right, a, a very energetic minister at the time, I think, uh, Simon. Um, the uh, Mekathara School of the Air, one of the world's biggest schools, operating over 540,000 square kilometres, was relocated to Geraldton after being damaged twice by fire. This was particularly pleasing to me in my role at the time as Chair of the Rural and Remote Education Advisory Council. I hope I contributed to the betterment of regional education during the time I spent as Chair of RIA, and I thank those who served with me. Sometimes there has to be pain for gain. For instance, the demersal fishing bag limits and the closure of the uh, lobster fishery during the Puralis crisis uh, put real pressure on fishers, the, the department, the minister, and local MPs. But as a result, both the demersal and the lobster fisheries remain strong. Indeed, the WA lobster industry has maintained its marine stewardship count, uh, certification, and I'm proud to have attended a uh, marine steward, a stewardship uh, council meeting in Brussels with the former minister for fisheries, uh, the Honourable Norman Moore, to argue the case to keep this cert certification. Of course, um, Mr President, sometimes it takes a long time to convince some people of the merits of your argument. But along, after long debates, um, many speeches and parliamentary questions, farmers now can grow GM canola if they wish. This technology is one of the greatest advances in agriculture, I believe, and I'm proud to have been a part of achieving this. In generations to come, when the uh, time capsule to mark the opening of the refurbished legislative council chambers is opened, my packet of GM can canola and my packet of non-GM canola uh, seed will commemorate, commemorate the fact that 2010 was the year of choice uh, for WA canola farmers. And who knows, we may even see GM canola grown on the Honourable Darren West farm. <laughs> we'll all turn out for that. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Mr. President, 
It is always satisfying when you can change what would have uh, been a bad decision uh, into a good result. And I'm speaking now, obviously, about the State Department's intention to close the WA Trade Office in Jakarta. When a group of us uh, were able to convince the Premier of the merits of keeping the Trade Office, he not only agreed to keep the office, but also increased the staffing. So I was very pleased to travel uh, to Jakarta with the Premier and the Honourable Phil Edmund uh, for the launch of the revitalised Trade Office. And while I'm on the subject of uh, Indonesian trade, I would like to make the case for more focus on Indonesia. Indonesia has 260 million people on our doorstep, is on a track to become the fourth biggest global economy, a population growth rate of 1.3% a year, and a rising living standard, yet remains neglected as a potential export market compared to the effort uh, invested into China's potential. And I read the other day uh, an article uh, that did surprise me. Um, in 2015, apparently, uh, we invested more money in New Zealand than we did in Indonesia. And I don't want to be critical of our New Zealand cousins, but uh, there is only four and a half million of them. So I hope we don't miss opportunities in Indonesia because other countries are investing there. And I hope the new state government also recognises the value and supports the role of our trade officers. Mr President, one of the most rewarding achievements for me in my time in this place was brought about by the Honourable Sue Ellery, um, the leader of the government in this house um, now. Uh, she introduced me to two very smart people, Professors uh, Steve Wilton and Sue Fletcher, who were doing research into Duchenne muscular dystrophy, an issue close to my heart, having had a brother who died from this disease. The two um, professors were in need of uh, funding to continue this uh, research, otherwise they would have to leave WA and go overseas. And as the Honourable Sir Elry said to me, I was in government with the money, so it was up to us to find the funds. So with the help of the Honourable Nick Goran, we convinced the former Health Minister, Kim Holmes, uh, to provide $6 million over three years to keep these brilliant people here in WA. The best part of this story, Mr President, occurred last year when Steve Wilton and Sue Fletcher developed a drug which essentially provides a genetic patch to combat this condition, which has been approved by the US Food and Drug Administration. Now, to give you some idea of the importance of this discovery, you may uh, have read in an opinion piece in um, the Weekend West on the 29th of April by Paul Murray, titled Miracle of Duchenne Drug. Now, it talks about a 16-year-old American teenager named Billy, um, <clears throat> uh, who is one of these boys in every 3,500 who has Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And as Paul wrote, Billy was here to see the two uh, Perth researchers who performed the miracle that sees him not confined to a wheelchair or dreading dying within a decade. He um, hadn't been doing well at school and then after the treatment he started to ace, um, ace his scores. His mum asked him why. I'm not going to die next year, he told his mother. His mother told Paul about the long struggle to get the genetic patch approved by the US uh, Food and Drug Administration. But Mr. President, the approval process hasn't even started in Australia. I join the local families and research, uh, researchers in hoping that the Therapeutic Goods Administration uh, will take the notice of the trials in America and hasten their approval. Then other bo uh, boys can share in Billy's uh, miracle. Mr. President, it has been said before and uh, that our democratic system of government may not be perfect, but it is still the best system of government. I believe um, that members of parliament serve a valuable role in this system of government 
that is not often recognised or appreciated when, and when I hear calls of wage freezes or cuts to members' allowances, I do get annoyed. Mr President, if anyone cared to look at MP salary increases over the last eight years, they would find that they, are, they were minimal and in one year, no increase at all. Mr President, I know that majority of work members here and in both houses work very hard and are, and are on call uh, whenever they are needed and they do this without any of the benefits of the general workforce or the general workforce has. Yet I know my comments will have little sympathy in the general community or the media where the common view is that MPs are underworked and overpaid. But as this is my last chance to stand up for the role of uh, members, I uh, thought this needed to be said. And I would also say that any move to take away the role of SAT as the independent decision maker on MPs' salaries as foolish and they should remain truly independent without government interference. Mr President, I have enjoyed my uh, time as a member of the Agriculture Region. I hope I've been some, of some service to the people in that region. I've enjoyed serving on uh, and chairing uh, committees of the Legislative Council with members from all parties in this House, and I hope my time on these committees, uh, which looked into issues such as coastal shacks, sandalwood, fracking, and many more, brought some common sense and fairness to those matters. I should also mention those who helped me initially and stopped me from making a fool of myself. Uh, the Honourable Norman Moore, the Honourable George Cash, the Honourable Bruce Donaldson in particular, have been value mentors in their time. Indeed, yourself, Mr President, having shared an office in opposition with you. I'm indebted to them for their friendship and advice. And in conclusion, Mr President, this time um, is for the thank yous and the goodbyes. Firstly, can I say uh, thank you and goodbye to all the staff of this place. They make our life more pleasant and easier than it would be otherwise. And I've had a good working relationship with all of them, um, particularly Hansard. Uh, I do remember the worst speech I ever did in this place. And uh, uh, I'd been asked by the then leader, the Honourable Norman Moore, to fill in time and uh, as to, to take us up to the dinner break. And, uh, and it was full of dribble and ums and ahs. <laughs> and we, I just waffled on, waffled on. And uh, imagine the surprise the next day when I read Hansard and the speech. <laughs> The speech was a hell of a lot better than I thought it was. <laughs> so they did a good job, a better job than I did of it anyway. And uh, also, um, I, I, I thank you and uh, a goodbye to all the members of the other parties in this place. I may not have agreed with a lot of what you have said or what you stand for, but I do respect you. Uh, thank you and goodbye to my colleagues in the Liberal team for your friendship and support over my time as a member. I am grateful to the Liberal Party for giving me the opportunity to spend nearly 10 years serving the agriculture region. A special goodbye and thank you to my personal staff, Sally, Jenny, Anita, Piera, and my former staffer, Lee. They uh, have all done the work behind the scenes to make me look better. A very special thank you to my family, and as we all know, it is our partners and family who miss out the most when we cannot be there when we are needed. I would particularly thank, like to thank my wife, Marg, um, for being so understanding and supportive of me, not only the 10 years of state parliament, but also the 10 years in local government before and uh, I do know that she has spent many of a lonely night, uh, weekends and uh, public holidays. That's when we're called on mostly as a member to attend functions. And in my um, serving uh, my region as a member for the Ag region, 
she has missed out on a lot. Uh, a lot of my time, a lot with her. But um, I know she's going to fix this because I've seen the list of things to do. <laughs> uh, in my time of retirement, uh, I don't think my feet are, is, are going to touch the ground for the first 12 months, so there won't be any lazing around. So, so and uh, unfortunately she couldn't be here tonight because uh, she's climbing mountains in Nepal at the moment. Uh, uh, a pre-arranged uh, uh, booking that couldn't be helped, uh, she couldn't make it here tonight. But I really do appreciate her support and uh, it is your time now, Mug. Um, it's very pleasing to me tonight uh, to have my son, Toby, and his wife, Peter, the grandchildren, Jack, Harvey, and Olivia, here tonight for my final speech. Um, it is a pity my daughter, Lara, and her husband, Bruce, and uh, her family, Sienna and Jazz, couldn't be here tonight, but I promised I would get their names into Hansard, so <laughs> I think I've achieved that. <laughs> Mr. President, there will be a life for me after politics, but it has been an honour and a privilege. Thank you.